Who have been glad when everybody go and skew here, and today we're playing a little game called Arc Age. Now, I don't know if any of you are familiar with it, but it's an MMORPG that <laughs> can literally take over your life. My name is Captain Goonski in it, and I play on the Prophecy server if any of you want to join me ever in a future video or somewhat. Now, let me tell you a little bit about it. Arcage is a beautiful game, fully designed to house differences and other things. You can be a farmer, you can be a fisherman, you can be a warrior, you can be the world's greatest hero. You can do it all in Arc Age. But, I'm going to teach you a little bit about farming and getting gold and experience really easily. It took me only 15 days with the trick I'm about to show you to actually gain the same amount of experience and level you are seeing right now. Within 15 days, I gained up to 1,060 or 1,660 gold coins for Patreon usage. As you can see up here, I am a Patreon. I did not buy it, I worked for it. And today's tutorial is literally going to be about teaching you how to do this. Anyway, let's get right to it then. Now, for those of you who are probably starting as Nubians, which are just basically the normal human race of the game. I don't know why they couldn't just call it people, but, you know, or, or humans, or whatever. You'll start off in this area over here. If you look closely at my map, let me just enhance that for you. You'll start off over here, in Deserain. And then slowly move down the road, up to the Blue Mist Forest, which is basically where I am. Now, every day, at the Bloomers Forest, you will have a daily, which you can do. This area is called Souls Read, which is the region. And in Souls Read, you can do tons of things. There are three bosses, which you can go and kill for 20,000 XP per kill, which adds up to 60,000 if you kill all three of them. But to do that, you have to be a very early bird in the server. I, I remember when I was that dedicated. <laughs> Anyway, all you have to do is you have to come walk up to the signpost, press F, and accept the quest, which gives you 510 XP, which for us higher levels is actually nothing, but for the lower weaklings, it will be something spectacular. These are level 5 violent monolith guardians, and quite easy to kill for me. But to the newer, newer player, it would be quite an issue. So I'm just going to go ahead and kill these really quickly with my attacks. Oh, they only hit one because that one moved. He thought he was going to be a hero. Alright, three monolith guardians killed and everything. I just got a 500 and... What was it? 60 XP? And that was basically nothing for me, but it will be something for the newer, newer region players. Uh, another thing that I would like to share is that the three bosses are located at the beach of Souls Reed Gate, Souls Reed Gate, at the Castigan Ruins, and at the Little Waterfall Bridge area, closer to that. The three bosses are epic heroes in the game, and are probably going to kill you without the first mention of seconds if you're lower than level 25 so I would not suggest taking him on them on alone uh, secondly what you can do is you can come over here to the area of where you have to do a quest for the farmer sorry about the FPS drop it's the recording system itself that's making it this way uh, usually I have pretty good FPS in this game uh, you'll have to do a quest for Liam to shear his... Mm, there, Shepherd Liam. You'll have to do a quest for him to shear his sheep. But do never hand in that quest if you can. Save up that wool and just continue doing it the whole time. Because, you know, you get unlimited amount of sheep and stuff you can shear and stuff. Otherwise, if you have completed that quest, then you can always come back to the farm which is one thing I always did, 
And you can come and kill the extra sheep laying around. Just butcher them, and you will get sheep meat and sheep pelt, which is really important when it comes to crafting. So they sell pretty well in auction house areas. Don't ever sell your stuff to weak merchant. See, one wool is 10 copper, which isn't a lot. I, I will admit, it's not a lot. But 11 pieces of pelt is 5 silver. And just 16 pieces of mutton is 32 silver. So I'm going to go ahead and kill this sheep because I need, I need that. I need all three of those pieces that just were mentioned, actually. So, there we go. It's a pretty decent way of earning some money, and you don't have to spend a lot of time planting these sheep and collecting their fur and doing all that hard work, which you really are impatient to do. And don't tell me you're not, because I know you are. And the best part of it is that you actually gain a little bit of experience from it. Let me just show you here. Thank you all for uh, showing and appearing in my video. Uh, where was it? I can't... Okay, there. You get proficiency and then... I, I Yeah, you gain, you gain 1,998. I almost said 998. Uh, XP from just... Oh, boy, what did I just do? Okay, there we go. Sorry about the FPS, yet again. You gain 1,098 XP from just killing one sheep. Now, yet again, for a lower level, this is insane. This is what you need to do in the beginning. But to get these labor points that you have to constantly use, you have to leave your computer running day and night. At least have Arcage running in the background so that you can build up labor points when you're not a Patreon. If you're a Patreon, you get 10 labor points every 5 minutes, you're online and offline. But if you're not a Patreon, it's, it's a living hell because you have to gain 5 labor points every 5 minutes only when you're online. So the best would be to save up labor points and then come back to the farm. I mean, there are literally 3 plots where you can gather... Uh, sheep fur pelt, uh, sheep wool pelt, and meat from. So that is one important thing that you can do. Now, moving on to the next point. Anyway, guys, this is the secondary part of my journey, and I know that I have two quests over there. I'm not going to do them because that's a level 50 quest, and I, 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 I don't want to die just yet. The second part of this tutorial will be about these fir trees right over here. As you can see, that they're still young, and some of them actually still have a while to go. But, if you are the first person to collect them each day, or each two, three days, you will have an splendid amount of, A, wood, which is important for making houses, and is pretty valuable when you sell it on the auction house, because everybody's building houses. Um, secondary would be grapes. Grapes are important for... Oh, boy. What happened there? Uh, the FPS is bad. I apologize. Again. Uh, grapes are important for doing trade runs uh, from Souls Reed, which is the place that we're in, from over here, which is a little uh, workstation creation thingy, where, whatever you want to call it. Uh, literally across the waters into a place called Two Crown, Two Crowns, Crones. Ugh. Yay, English me. Attack me, grammar Nazis, please. To the cargo delivery station. Now, you can only do this if you are actually a level 30, because cargo can only be crafted and sold once you are level 30. And that's when you start becoming respected, I would say. Uh, another little area where you can collect a nice amount of wood would definitely be down the road and right to your right, actually, where, uh, I think it was beech wood trees grow? I think that's what they were called. I can't really remember. I think it's beech wood. I have collected so many trees. Oh, hornbeam. Hornbeam trees. I'm sorry. But yes, you can come over here and collect hornbeam trees 
for wood and experience. And sometimes you're pretty lucky when it comes to collecting them. You can, you can always dig them up, which actually does nothing, or you can actually chop them down. Now, let me just show you a real quick session of when you chop them down. Chopping down trees take about 10, uh, 10 labor points, and me cutting down that tree just gave me 732 XP, and it raised my proficiency of logging by a 10% point. And it gave me 6 logs, which is not bad at all. So, that is definitely a thing that you should do. Uh, there are quite a few here, so you don't ever have to worry about running out of wood to cut. But, be careful about these five four-finger robbers. They're pretty nifty when it comes to higher levels. But yet again, as I said before, for me, it's an insta-kill. And I'm just, no, I'm not showing off here, but, you know, it's, I'm just saying that leveling does give you a big difference. Uh, also, a little skill tip would definitely be to pick the blood skull uh, skill tree, which are these. Archery, Battle Rage, and Songcraft, which gives you the song, the, the class of Blood Skulled. Now, it's a really nifty uh, skill tree to learn, and you don't gain a lot of mobility, but you do gain a lot of damage, and you do gain a lot of, I would say, extra perks that you can use. Also, farming after these plain spiders after your level 14, or even after your level 12, if you're feeling gutsy for it. Uh, be sure to play with a partner, though, because heals are very important when it comes to fighting these. So have your partner be a healer, and then you just play on and annihilate them. And you can gain a lot of XP, and you get nifty little rewards as well, such as, uh, I think it was merchant coin purses, and, no, wait, they don't drop merchant, they drop farmers, yeah, they, these guys drop farmer coin purses and farmer chests, which can be opened and used. Coin purses obviously give you coin, and the farmers, uh, what was it, farmers chests give you extra stuff that you can sell and make money off of. Also medicine and alchemy resources. Both of them are pretty nifty when it comes to being used. So stacking up on them and selling them in the future would definitely be a good idea. Now, on to my second, or my third point where I want to show you, or it could be my fourth, I'm not quite sure, I've lost count. But anyway, before, I, before we go there, let me just first show you what I mean by uh, they're pretty hard to kill. I hope Darius is here. Darius is the headless horseman of Arc Age, uh, which is a pretty cool uh, Easter egg or reference, I would say. Uh, world bosses, these tiny world bosses, only appear every day, once a day. So if you are the first to kill them, hooray on you! If you're not, then you're you're in terrible luck. Honestly, you are. Hmm. Darius does not seem to be here. But this is the area where Darius usually is around. Uh, if you can find him, and if you can kill him, then you have really gained too high of a level to still be in Soul's Reed area, unless you're here to chop down the wood and gather grapes. Other than that, you should be out of here. But like I said, farming up to level... 10 or 12 in the Blue Mist Forest off of the Monolith Guardians would be a very good idea. And if you really feel like it, you can always chop down the trees for extra XP and kill the goats and sheep for extra XP and gold. See, I told you, this is about XP and gold. So if you farm enough of those sheep, mutton, and the pelts and the wool, you can definitely get some good gold for it. Well, silver and then gold. If you just farm off of the trees, you will get a lot of XP and you'll be able to build a house in the future or you can craft it into lumber and sell it on the auction house. That would be a different t tutorial for the future. Now, 
On to the next point. Now the second point of what I would like to show you all would be the Dunestone Excavation Site, which is the place where I am right now. It is not too far from Souls Reed. Uh, if you go down over here, let me just put a marker there. If you go over here, you'll find a little passageway which has been destroyed. Let me just go into Souls Reed, that is. See, over there from Lacton is a little stibble road, and then it ends in the mountain. You can literally just jump through the gates of, well, the gates. Yeah, quotation marks on that. And then climb over the mountain and reach the excavation site without a hassle. Oh, would you look at that? Shadow Dusted. Thank you for being in my video, Shadow Dusted. Uh, if you're watching this, that is. Um, now, what this place is, is literally... Hmm, it is literally an excavation site, which is brilliant for leveling up off of these golems and mining some iron ore. It is li literally just filled with iron ore. You can gain iron ore and stone and even copper, gold, diamonds, rubies, and everything else depending on what your proficiency is in the mining from this area. It has over 20 or 25 uh, iron veins, which you can mine from. I forgot what the word was for a second. I was going to say deposits, but you know. It has over 20 iron deposits, or veins, or whatever you would like to call it. And, oh boy, let's Google it. That is, that is an enemy. That is an... I'm leaving. I'm le I don't want to die. I do not want to die. Yeah, that, it's a good idea to leave. It's a good idea to leave. Google it is one of the uh, strongest enemy guilds in the entire game. And I'm, I'm glad he didn't kill me. I'm really glad he didn't kill me. As you can see, right here is a little daily you can do for, I think it is, 1,000 XP points. Yes, 1,140 XP points, which you can instantly gain from just killing, what is it, 10? Oh, it doesn't say. Guess I'll have to accept it real quick. New quest. Bounder Br Boulder Brawl. Okay, that's a weird name. Um... Yeah, I have a mini. Eight golems. You have to kill eight golems uh, for all of it to actually work properly. And you get 1,000 XP from just killing eight golems. And then you get the XP that the golems give themselves. As well as the farmers' coin purses. Ooh, XP, three, uh, XP. FPS 360 right there. Thank you very much. Um, and I think, I do believe that I have one more place to show you all. And that would be the dungeons. Now, doing dungeons every day will be a great way of gaining extra XP. Because I do believe if you go to the little area, that little squiggle line right there, that is a dungeon called Sand... I want to be sure about this, so I'm not going to go ahead and just butcher the name. Uh, it is called Sharpwind Mines. Now, it's a pretty decent um, mine. You'll definitely need to go with two, two friends or two higher-ups and just ask somebody who's sitting around or somebody who passed by. And hello, Heliosauria. I don't, I don't even know if I pronounced that correctly, but, you know, whatever. Just, you know, to all of them, thank you all for being in my video. Thank you all for just... And walking by. <laughs> uh, you can go there and you can definitely get some good, fantastic XP points and money as well. There's a lot of money in it if you do it. Also, be sure to do your daily logins. I have been logging in for the last 21 days and I got my... I do believe I had my Patreon over here on my on my twelfth day. So if you go ahead and you play for twelve days straight, uh, you'll get a nifty 
amount of gold and a nifty amount of things. And I'm saying nifty a lot because it just it feels right. But also, do your mirror quests. They can really help you out a lot. Crafting mirror quests are pretty easy, and then protecting an area is also really easy. You, you get like five gold. I get one gold for this because I am over the level of what I'm supposed to be. And you get a nice amount of XP as well, and merit badges. Now, another thing that I would like to say is that be sure to get into a guild as quickly as possible, uh, even Kanaha if you have to. Yes, I'm advertising Kanaha as a guild to come to, because we are one of the best guilds in the Nuian area. Now, now, hold on, hold on. Tea Party, uh, Angry Birds, all of you, you guys are fantastic, but I've been in those, and I, I don't feel that great when it comes to being in there. Um, expectation is, if it's your friend, you know, if you can make friends with one of the Kanaha partners, uh, or people, yeah, and yes, we have had a history of defeat and dominion, but we are very helpful, but we're full. Unfortunately, there's one space left. <laughs> We are very helpful when it comes to dungeons and wars and trading and things like that. If you if you're interested in the common basic things and you're not a war person, then Kanaha is very friendly. If you want to be part of Kanaha, just message one of these people, even me, Captain Gorinsky, right here, and I can help you out with anything that you would like. Um, I will be hosting some giveaways for gold and equipment and other things in the future via who knows the song. Now, another thing that I would like to say is be sure to get a few friends, play the game together, and make a family. Family quests are also pretty good when it comes to vocation points. Vocation points can be used for building houses, well, farms, and getting cattle and sheep. Everything you need to start a farm. Also, Gilda Coins are important for buying houses and ships and such. I don't have Gilda Coins on me right now, but I have a cannon on me for my ship. <laughs> anyway, that's it for me. Your host, Captain Gilinski. Ah, that was terrible. <laughs> Be sure to drop a like if you enjoyed it. And what am I saying? No, no, this is not the way that the gooeys do it. Be sure to obliterate that like button if you enjoyed it. And share it around with all your friends, family, and pets. Because we all know that pets watch YouTube too. And... Thank you all so much for those of you who walked past me and interrupted my video. You guys are fantastic. Uh, also, be sure to press the poll, which have probably been on the top right of your screen the entire time. Be sure to click it and do it. Choose one of those options and I will actually attend to your needs. I will give you what you want. Because I can give you what you want, and I can give you so much more, if you just allow me to do it. But anyway, I will surely be here in the future. Now, this is it. The last thing that I ask of you to do is stick to being awesome and being who you are. I hope this tutorial really helped you guys, but that's it for me. But until next time, see ya!